but speaking of that, let me ask you this, man. I heard somebody say, so I see you over here, you got the CompTIA classes. So I see some people talk shit about the CompTIA search. Uh, they say, oh, it's not, it's a waste of time, not worth it, blah, blah, blah. What would be your answer to people who, who, who say something like that about the CompTIA classes? Well, normally people who say CompTIA certs aren't worth it, these are people that are already in IT and they're doing like a higher level job. So you might have somebody that's been in cybersecurity or doing networking or whatever. They've already been in the business for a hot little minute. So they know the difference between a CompTIA cert and a higher level cert like a CCNA or a penetration tester or something like that. CompTIA is still good. All you got to do is go to Indeed, the website Indeed, and just type in entry level IT jobs or A plus, and it'll pull up a gang of jobs. And in the description, they're going to ask for your A plus, your network plus, and or your security plus certification. As a matter of fact, if you want to get a job working for the federal government doing IT stuff, it's a mandatory requirement that you have to have the security plus certification which is a CompTIA cert. So the CompTIA certs are not bad. I talk about them from a perspective that I'm dealing with people who are complete newbies to IT. My target audience isn't geared towards the person who's been in IT already and they're trying to study for their CCNA or their or some other higher level cert. This is really a good baseline understanding for somebody who was completely new. Like I see Brother Truth just said, Comp T is complete trash. I, I disagree because, like I said, all you got to do is go on to Indeed and you go to Indeed.com, type in entry level IT jobs and read the job descriptions. Nine times out of 10, they're going to ask for a Comp T certification as a prerequisite just to apply for the job. So I don't see how it's trash when that's what the employers are asking for. Is he still there? Did he drop out? So, anyways, this, this is now the Tech G Show to Ramil Show back up like i say when people who say it's trash and look everybody's entitled to their opinion and they have their reasons for doing so but based off of my experience most people who say that these are people who are already in tech they've been doing this for a hot little minute so they'll sit there and they'll tell somebody just to totally bypass it go get your ccna that'll only work for so many people it's not going to work for the average brand new person who's trying to get into it because they're not they're just not going to under they won't even understand the concept of if i throw out this term what's a router on a stick Somebody who's never done IT before when, is not going to know what the heck we're talking about. So that's why I say start off with CompTIA because this is what a lot of employers will ask you for for an entry level job. I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. You back? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, man. They, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, yeah, my bad. What, what were you saying? No, nah, I was just explaining to them about, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion on how they feel about CompT asserts. But like I say, when I hear people disagree with them being good, is not, nine times out of 10 is normally coming from somebody who's already been working in IT and they have experience. I'm stressing that it's good for somebody who is a complete newbie to IT that doesn't really know anything. So people can get employed with, with these, uh, with the CompT and things like that. Yes. And they oftentimes ask for it. Okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. I see something on this, on this uh, video that caught my eye. I know me and Big Trevor were talking about this the other day. This crypto mining thing. Uh, can you uh, real quick, it says illegal crypto mining. Is crypto mining illegal or, or no? No, it's not illegal as far as I know in this country. Now, in some other countries like China, and that video I did was actually crypto mining operation in the Ukraine where they had like a full-blown warehouse with 5,000 you know, computers and GPUs all over the place. So basically, it's... I don't know the total legality of it in other countries, but one of the problems is these crypto mining operations, when they become full blown, like the one I talked about in that video, they can drain a lot of resources from the power grid to where now you have people in, in the surrounding areas experiencing what they call a brownout or and or a blackout where mm -hmm. they're not getting... Uh, you know, somebody down the street, they can't get adequate electricity to power their house because this crypto mining thing is sucking, literally sucking up all the electricity off the grid. So like I say, I don't know the total, whether it's legal or illegal in these other countries, but that's one of the major problems they have. These places, you can just go look up crypto mining operations in China. They'll show you pictures on Google of full blown warehouses where it's just, you go down every single row, they're just computers and GPUs all over the place. And and they're just draining electricity off the grid. And that particular video that I did, the people who were doing it, they were draining as much as like $250,000 worth of electricity off the grid. <laughs> they manipulated it to where their electric meter wasn't registering. Like they somehow manipulated the system. So that's uh, part of the problem with crypto mining. Oh, okay. I was curious about that. And uh, let me ask you this out as well. I know you see, said some people will fail. This. Are these uh, certs hard to get? Like, is the average person, do you have to have above average intelligence to um, accomplish that's, these? That's a tricky question to ask. I like to say, no, you don't. But then again, 
when I was in the military, I mean, you know about this. We all took the ASFAB mm -hmm. test before we got into the military. The ASFAB, for those you don't know, stands for the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It's almost like the Army's version of an IQ test to a certain extent. And in order to go into the uh, IT field in the Army, you had to score a certain percentage point just to apply or just to hope and pray you can get into IT. Now, once you're in there, I've seen some complete dummies go in there and, and learn this thing. But realistically, I don't think you have to be above average intelligence. I think you have to have a willingness to sit down and study and learn. And I mean, that's what you have to do. So you can be somewhat of a stereotypical idiot, you know, however you frame that. But if you can learn how to study, then you can go out there and pass these certs. But if you don't study, there's a high chance you're not going to pass. I mean, that's just the way a lot of these tests are designed. But you have to be willing to put in the work and study. You can't go in there and half-ass it or you're almost guaranteeing that you're going to waste your money because you have to pay for these tests before you can sit down and take them. And like that A-plus test you just pulled up, it's actually two tests. It's the hardware test and the software test. And each test costs about $220. So you're looking at a $400 investment. Why would you not study for something that costs you a grand total of $400? You know what I'm saying? So it's not hard. The hard part is making yourself study. Okay, true indeed. Will there be any more things you're going to be teaching or just, uh, just what you see? Yeah, to, so, or? well, as you see at the top, I got a class called IT Fundamentals up top right there. This is the class that I tell people to take. If you know absolutely nothing about IT other than how to you know, watch YouTube videos and buy stuff off Amazon. So, but if you know a little something, something, I tell people to start with the A plus certification. And like I say, it's two tests, it's the hardware and the software. And then after that, I got what is called the network plus. That's the class that I'm currently building. I'm still creating material for it now. That class teaches you just basic networking concepts, which can lead you into going to get your CCNA and all that stuff. And as a matter of fact, this is what somebody like Brother Truth would probably be like, just skip that and go for your CCNA, which I understand why he would say that if he were to say that. And then, but after after this, I plan on putting up a class called Security Plus. And like I said earlier, if you want to go work for, be like a government contractor or something, doing IT work, you're going to have to have that cert. That's actually the starting point for beginning cybersecurity is the Security Plus. So I plan on putting that up on my website and on my YouTube channel. Oh, no, definitely. That's what, uh, you know, I can definitely tell you put your uh, time into this. That's what made it stand out to me, man. And um, there's a lot of brothers out here who just, who want to know, who want to get into it. They just don't know how. Well, here, here's how, you know, entry level, because uh, I've been looking at these, uh, every time I when I look at the news, they're always talking about all these job openings in this field. You know what I'm saying? In this tech field, whether it is coding, whether it is cybersecurity, it's always talking about, oh, we have hundreds of thousands of jobs opening. I'm like, yo, well, if you're hungry, I want to learn everything I possibly can. Do you need college to get into any of these? Or is it your... No, you don't need college to do any of this stuff. College degrees, it depends on what like you might need a college degree if you want to become a computer scientist or if you want to become what they call like a chief information officer or chief technology, you know, somebody that sits at the executive board with the CEO or something like that. Or if you want to become a college professor, but to get into cybersecurity or even to get into programming, you don't need a college degree. The stuff that I put on here, they're teaching kids as young as middle school how to do this stuff, man, to where a kid can essentially graduate high school at the age of 18 and they can have all these certs that I teach and they can go out there and get a job straight out their mama's house, paying them like anywhere between forty to fifty thousand dollars a year as their very first job straight out of high school with no college. So you don't need college to do this at all. Yeah, somebody said drop the link. I'm gonna drop the link for any, if everybody who's, who's interested. Uh, I'm gonna drop the link to the channel and the website because uh, you know a lot of a lot of brothers out there are, are looking for direction. And uh, this is another avenue right here, man. I mean, I'm tired of seeing the news talking about all these job openings. So I'm just like, yo, like it is what it is. I, I pretty much answered all my questions, man. Um, you know, I see you doing your thing, and I definitely really wanted to highlight that because um you know i'm all about the tech all about brothers getting over there salute to you guys uh did you have time to do a, uh take some questions or anything yeah yeah i got time okay okay what we're gonna do i'm about to put this link down here and if you with questions or whatever agreement disagreement you can come up and now, i do want to say something because i know you're all about people starting their own businesses and stuff like that eventually yeah now, mm -hmm. my content like I say, it's geared towards getting people a job, but you can also take that same information and start your own business. And let's just say you decide you want to go out there and start a business fixing people's iPads and iPhones or just doing basic computer maintenance you know, because you want to compete with the Geek Squad or something like that. Like You can go out there and do that. Or you can go out there and, and set up security systems in people's houses, like the ring doorbells and all these other little things. Like all of that's a, a function of IT as well. So the information that I teach on here, even though it's elementary stuff, 
stuff that well, I consider elementary stuff, you can still take that information and actually go out there and start some type of IT business. Because I know when people think of IT businesses, they think of some monstrosity like Facebook or Google. Nah, man, you can literally go around fixing iPhone. Like I, I met a black dude about a year or two ago. Matter of fact, he had got out the army after like four years and started a business down here where he was going around fixing iPhones, fixing some iPads and, you know, doing some other computer stuff. And he had his own truck driving all around the city doing it. He was, he was just out there getting it. You can do that as well. Yeah, I pretty much, any anything, I know anything can be started into a business. You know, that's, I always believe that's the end goal. You know, you can't just jump into it all the time, man. You know, obviously I get on the job experience, things like that. But yeah, y'all already know how I get down. Eventually, y'all know I'm about that business ownership.